We are back for another episode of Sound of Hockey's Kraken Takeaways. It's going to be a special one, folks. I'm pretty pretty excited to be talking to you this morning, John. It is early again on Tuesday. I don't know why we keep doing these things so early, but it feels like the right thing to do to just get it out there. <laughs> First thing, you know what? Before we even get into anything, though, let's just let's just relive it for a minute. Let's just uh, soak this in, feel the excitement, look at the boys celebrate. Love it. Look at the rally towels. Oh. <laughs> wow. What a night. <laughs> Woo! This is, awesome. uh, yeah, Kraken Takeaways. I'm Darren Brown. And I'm John Barr. John, how are you feeling this morning? Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. What a okay. what a signature moment for this franchise last night, you know. Yeah. And um, they just minted, you know, a couple hundred thousand fans, probably. <laughs> I right? think Anybody so. I think so, man. It was <laughs> it was definitely one of those uh, one of those unforgettable nights that um, you you felt the atmosphere might have been even better than it was in the previous game. Which I mean, they got a win, right? So like that's a big difference. But you go to overtime, I think that people just get to a different level in terms of how intense it is and how they're feeling. Um, and I guess that brings us to our first topic, which is what an experience. Um, it was it was nuts in there last night. It really was. It was it was um, honestly things I dreamed of, right? Yeah. Uh, overtime winners and at home uh, in the playoffs. And I don't know if you remember seeing it in my in my musings post from Monday. Uh, like a couple hours before the game, I said, "Would be fun is if if this fan base experiences playoff uh, overtime hockey." Yeah, I'm yeah. like, my heart can't take it, but it would be a, quite the experience, you know. And I'm just like, why did I say that? Why did I say that? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's it's the team served up. What a great experience, right? And and you know, we we've seen for new fans, right? They might not have ever experienced like overtime playoff hockey yet right and and i go crazy when i don't have a, a a dog in the fight right like it go it's it's so amazing and then to have your team in it and kind of feeling like oh my gosh colorado could win this one even though it seemed like seattle totally outplayed them yeah and then early in overtime too right relatively early it was so it was such an amazing moment. Uh, it does happen because of a big overtime winner, as you alluded to there from uh, from Jordan Eberle. And talking through how that happened, it was kind of a weird game with penalties. I thought there were several questionable calls against the Kraken. Um, I don't normally complain about the refs. I think they have a really hard job uh, and things are happening lightning fast. There were a lot of calls that I thought didn't go Seattle's way. They that I kind of thought should have, right? Um, Seattle's, uh, excuse me, the, the referees then kind of swallowed their whistles for the third period. So you're like, all right, they're not calling anything else here. Um, but they, the Kraken got a great opportunity two minutes into overtime. Jaden Schwartz just did a little give and go with Brandon Tanev to send, effectively send himself on a breakaway um, or a partial breakaway. Josh Manson drags him down, obvious penalty. So now they have a power play in overtime, right? And they had clicked, which we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but um, that last goal, man, it was just a, just a greasy goal. They kind of got a good bounce. Jaden Schwartz tried to shoot. It got blocked and rolled right to Jaden. Sh- Did I say Jaden Schwartz? No, <laughs> Jaden Schwartz shot. It got blocked, rolled right to Jordan. Eberle. Jordan Eberle buried it and uh bedlam ensued. That was, wild. it was, it was so amazing. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's good to call out that, that um, the power play that, that would created the power play, right. The drawn mm-hmm. power play. Uh, power, penalty there um, well and it was Schwartz right I mean he yeah, he made yeah, a great totally. play and then he gets the assist on the on the game winner so that was pretty cool I mean it, it made him one of the stars of the game last night no question two quick plays in succession um so that's uh yeah that was cool I, I think it, it, was, it was amazing recognized. it was it really amazing was. Uh, kale yeah. is the worst kind of salad uh unless it's kale flurry obviously yeah he has a great salad these days really nice flow um <laughs> so Let's talk about what happened here between Kale Flurry, oh no, Phil McCarr, 
and Jared McCann. Uh, so on one of those questionable power plays that the Kraken were killing, Jared McCann was out there killing it. He got a great opportunity on a breakaway. Went in, Alexander Georgiev made the save, deflected the puck up, up into the netting, out of play. And then you figure, okay, the play's over. You're just like looking around. And for some reason, McCarr just <laughs> destroys McCann into the end wall. Uh, injures McCann. McCann looks uh, not not in a good place. I thought he hit his head pretty hard on the ice. Clearly not expecting that hit. Um, and that made Kale McCarr kind of public enemy number one for the Kraken fans last night. I was quite impressed at the commitment to booing him. Not just when he touched the puck, but even at times just for stepping on the ice. He'd come over the boards and the fans would <laughs> just be all over him, which I thought was uh, pretty impressive. I think, you know, I think you and I, John, have talked about um, what this what this fan base can do to grow and to learn and all that. I thought they showed some pretty good knowledge last night. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was that was uh, nice to hear that hate rain down on Kale and and he was out there a lot. <laughs> That's the crazy part, right? He, he you know he played almost half the game, not quite, but um, yeah, unfortunate hit. Um, and uh, you know it's tough because I don't I don't have access to replays where I'm watching um, and. You know, it, it looked dirty, looked after the play. I And I don't know the rules that, that reduces it from a five to two. And I don't even know if they were going to call the original penalty. Until I, think he got the, hurt. I think the fans told them that they sucked enough time. They were like, yeah, but, but the ref that, that was right down there in the corner, uh, yeah. I don't think he ever had his hand up, conferred with his, his the uh, linesman and the, the uh, referee. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of... Um, assessed a five minute then reduced it down to a two and i i just don't know the rules enough but clearly there's it, it could have been a five because now he's got a hearing today yeah um and we don't know the results of that hearing but as of the recording of this video as of the recording but it's pretty much guaranteed that he's going to get suspended I'd yeah say if he's having a if he's having a time, hearing yeah yep. yeah you know, the the issue with it like if if McCann has the puck there it's a clean hit right? He, he hits him just hard into the boards. No problem. It's a mile after he shot the, or like a long time after he shot the puck, the puck was totally out of play. Um, Hackstall was visibly angry about it afterwards, which you don't, you don't see that too much from Hackstall, especially after a big win like that. Like yeah. he's, he's very level headed. Um, and I guess by visibly angry, I mean, he just had more terse words, but um, yeah. yeah, they didn't like it. Certainly. Uh, it took this series to a totally different level. I think in terms of vitriol and hatred between the two, um, we saw a ton of scrappiness, uh, after almost every whistle at the end of the first period, every player on the ice seemed to be, uh, mixing it up with somebody. Yanni Gord had his name chanted as he, as he mixed it up <laughs> with Josh Manson, which I thought was pretty incredible. I asked him after the game, if, if that's ever happened to him before. And he was like, yeah, I think that's happened before. He's like, <laughs> All right. Well, that wasn't a good question then, but oh well. <laughs> Thanks for playing along there, Yanni. Jeez. Yeah. 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 But um, but man, it's gonna it's gonna put this series into a different position. You know, I, I think the the first three games in terms of like the feistiness and the hatred, it was very tame, especially compared yeah. to the other series around the league. And for whatever reason, I don't there just wasn't a lot of that. Now that's that's out the window. These teams clearly very much hate each other. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to game five already. That was, that was quite the, quite the battle out there. Um, Hackstall, I asked Hackstall about this too. If, if, you know, if that's a benefit or, uh, or a detriment to the team moving forward, um, he said, you know, you just have to rise with the intensity, right? As the intensity goes up, you have to get more intense. And he said, uh, and I guarantee you the intensity is not going the other way now as the series goes on. Speaking of which, uh, the power play woke up a little bit last night. They had two goals. The first one came. Um, so again, the Kraken jumped out to an early lead fourth game in a row that they've done that. Uh, but they extended the lead to two zero with a Daniel Sprong power play goal. What I thought was a little different about the power play last night was it was just simple. It was just simple plays. Just get the puck up top and shoot the puck and try to get traffic in front. That was all they were doing. There was no like cross seam kind of stuff. There were no fancy Dan passes as John Forsland would say, it was just simple plays, get it up to the top, get traffic to the front, shoot the puck. And it worked very much on the sprung shot, which that was an absolute snipe. What a shot that was. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously it happens again in, in overtime. And 
Um, you know, Eberly was saying last night, he was like, yeah, we, we knew we had to convert there. If you look at how overtime games have been ending, it's been on early uh, uh, power plays. We had to take advantage of that. It's been a sore spot for us here this this series. Um, and it seemed like they they woke up. I, I You know, I can't help wondering, like, how much did that garbage time, totally useless goal that they scored uh, at the end of game three, like, did that give them a little bit of confidence? Maybe, you know, um, but it looked very different last night. Their zone entries were cleaner. All of it yep. just looked, looked very different yeah. and just a lot more simple, simplified, simple, yeah. and a lot, and simply, and... <laughs> did we say it's early <laughs> yeah. anyway? It's, uh, it, yeah, I, I totally agree with your sentiment. And, and speaking of that specifically, the overtime opportunity on the power play right or wrong, in that situation, if they don't convert, the next penalty is going against Seattle. You, more yep. times than not, they because yep. the refs try to, again, right or wrong, they, they shouldn't do this as far as I'm concerned, but they'll probably try to kind of, uh, you know, offset the other one, even though it's it's unjustified, right? A penalty is a penalty. It doesn't matter right. who's committing it. But so that was nice to convert on that because you knew the next one was going against Colorado and Colorado's power play is lethal still. Yeah, uh, yeah they they call the narrative of the game uh, is what seems to happen. And it especially bothered me in this one because Seattle, and I, again, I don't complain about the refs very often. Seattle got two early power plays, which made sense because they were dominating the game. Like when yep. you're dominating, you usually draw penalties. So you knew the next one was coming against uh, against Seattle. And it's that play where Bowen Byram holds up Yanni Gord behind the net. And Yanni's like, what are you doing? He finally drops his glove. Byram doesn't drop his gloves. And then Gord gets the only penalty. And I was like that. Right. And that's exactly the, the thing where it's like, you just know that that next penalty is coming against Seattle. So I think you're spot on there. I think that they, for whatever reason, they, they don't want to decide the game. So they just try to make it seem like it's really even, even though it's not always right. I mean, yeah, Seattle's out shooting you two to one. They probably have the puck more often, so they might deserve a couple more penalties. Right. I think that's okay to call more penalties. On and the I thought the, uh, against, the, you know, you know, what I mean. yeah. And the, and the penalty that, where Rantanen was holding, uh, whose stick was that? That, that was Borgen. Him. Yeah. That was, that, that to me <laughs> yeah. was like absolutely bogus, right? And like, that was, where, that was how they got the tying goal was on that. Right, play. right. So. And I was just like, that should not have happened. So no. anyway, uh, uh, I, I'm the same way. I don't, I don't complain about the rest too much, but. Right. Brings us though to uh, flipping the script. The script was officially flipped from the previous two games uh, because again, we go to the third period and they're tied and, that's after jumping out to a 2-0 lead again uh, in the first period, or at least a two-goal lead, I should say. The Avalanche again come roaring back, two goals by Miko Rantanen in the second period. You had to be feeling, I certainly felt it, John, you had to be feeling that sense of, oh, God, here we go again, going into the third, right? Yeah, yeah, and and I had to remind myself, I'm like, it's still just a tie game, right? Like, I yes, I was kind of gutted a bit um, going into the third, but I'm like, it's a tie game and they've been dominating for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, anyway, I, uh, yeah, totally. It was, it felt, it felt oddly familiar, right. The, with the, the two plus goal lead in the last two games and Colorado doing Colorado things, right. With the stars coming out, right. And ran yeah. in two goals and, and you're like, okay. And I was terrified. Uh, McCarr was going to be the one that, that, uh, scored a third goal for yeah. Colorado. And I just yeah. been like, no, can't, it can't happen. Can't happen. So mm. it was, it was awesome though. Yeah. The boys stuck with it. Uh, tight checking third period. They got themselves to overtime. Uh, my blood pressure went through the historic <laughs> roof of client pledge arena, but they Historic. got through, they did it. Yeah. They got the win uh, two to two series. It's best of three now. So, and we're guaranteed a game six at home, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So a Friday night. I think that's all I can muster right now. Um, yeah. Thank you for, uh, for doing this. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> thank you for your efforts. Oh, you know what my closing thought is going to be? Uh, there was a moment last night where I leaned over. I was saying nice to RJ from Emerald city. And I was like, Hey, um, I just don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> and he goes, remember when you were doing full podcast episodes on a tree being removed outside of key arena? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
I was like, it's a pretty good point. Good perspective. So. Yeah. Yeah. I've come a long way, right? Yeah, yeah. We sure have. We sure have. All right. That's enough of this. Thank you all for watching. Crack and take you. Takeaways.